Good morning. I'm happy to be here with Austin Smith this Good morning. morning. Yeah. Nice to see you, and I look forward to talking with you about your uh, artwork and your process. Yeah. Uh, thank you for agreeing to be part of this interview. Absolutely, I'm happy to be here. Great. Um, Austin, um, before I came over here to Ellensburg this morning, I saw some videos of you working as an artist. And in both of those videos, you began um, your time in the studio before you started to work on artwork with um, what I call a series of yoga poses. Yes. Would you talk about that? Yeah, you bet. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, uh, I really appreciate um, you guys being a part of uh, building the Icicle Creek uh, Arts and um, reaching out to Allensburg artists like myself. Um, uh, the real crux of me doing yoga and getting into breathing is, is really to help me to pay attention to what I'm feeling. Um, the balance inside of my body, um, what breathing and yoga can do for me uh, to get into a flow state and to uh, spend time observing what it is that I'm doing and uh, a, a practice. I view my art and my yoga and my breathing and uh, my studies just practicing and learning about myself and, and, and my work. So. That's really interesting. Um, in this video you also mentioned about um, bringing whatever you were feeling to creating art at the time. Um, you mentioned like feelings like when you come to paint or sculpt, uh, feeling angry or uh, calm or confused or something like that. Um, I wanted you to talk about that and, and also you used the phrase bringing your whole self to your artwork. Yeah. So all these emotions that we experience as humans uh, are such a wonderful thing. Um, even the things that we dislike, uh, we, are, we are still exercising and drawing to these emotions because we, we can identify with them. Um, in a lot of ways, bringing those emotions out instead of pushing them back and rece receding, to try and cultivate those emotions, to then bring that content into the work seems to me uh, a worthy pursuit and something to pay attention to in that they're valuable things that we have as humans, you know. That's really interesting. Yeah. So you're not, um, you're not one to skip a day and mm. go for a bike ride if you're having a bad day or something like oh. that. You want to bring it. I mean. Yes. So the bike ride is in a lot of ways, the, the building, the art, it can, it can transpire in a, in a lot of different ways. The, the walk um, can relieve certain emotions. Uh, if, if that's my goal to just decompress, which is a lot of times what we need to do. <laughs> sure. <laughs> to breathe, to, to go for that walk or that bike ride. I like to try and take some of that into the, into the canvas or into the drawing and let that be a part, and, and there's writing that gets into that, and write it down and feel it, mm -hmm. really uh, engage with it. And those emotions will pass, and a lot of times, you know, we need a punching bag or something to yeah. get it out, we can do that. Um, and those, those are expressive gestures. And for me as an artist, I like to bring that oftentimes into uh, something that I can show. And, and display. So can you look at a painting that you've created and um, do you see your um, emotional state when you look at a painting that you painted a year ago? Mm. Certainly. Um, and a lot of times I get a different feeling from it. It may not be the exact same, but it'll be reminiscent. Okay. Um, and those ideas are often uh, subdued a lot of times. Okay. Um, so me showing all of my emotions isn't necessarily what I'm after. Okay. Showing emotion is definitely a critical part of that because there is concealing, this, this nature of uh, concealing emotion. And that sometimes becomes the, the artwork is 
how I layer to then resolve certain conflicts. And that becomes the interest to me. I see. So I gather that the painting isn't necessarily about that, mm -hmm. but you as the artist, um, you think it's important that you uh, experience emotion as yes. you paint, but the painting it doesn't necessarily, the results is not necessarily an angry painting or something like yes, that. Yes, it can very much okay. become that angry okay. painting, and maybe I will leave it open, mm -hmm. and, and part of the vulnerability of the painting can be shown. And, and curiosities can be built off of that. There, for me, the, the emotional content in the process of building the surface has, has the layers and I can come back to it and continue it or I can just leave it as it is. And abstraction really gives me that freedom. And that's why I love painting and painting abstractly because I can, I can put that out and I can continue or I can let it be because it might have a really good purpose or something that it just really resonates with me that I'll leave it. Well, I'm glad you brought up abstraction because as soon as I walked in this morning and saw your work hanging, I, um, I was really struck by the power of your paintings. And I'd like for you to talk about embracing abstraction as an art form and um, kind of why and how, uh, those, those kinds of things. Yeah, <clears throat> one thing that really helps, we have um, a specific dynamic, you know, my wingspan is six feet. So I, I have this, this tendency to lean into uh, being able to have that gesture happen. So a, a part of bringing, I hope I'm answering this question. Yes, I think you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, is to bring about the, the, the functionality of me as a human into a surface. So I like the big paintings. I like to be able to move with them, hear them as I'm, as I'm pushing into them. And, and the tools that I use can create this music. And when I paint, I'm, what I'm after is a, a relationship with what I'm being pulled into or, or um, I, I sometimes think of the flow state as as like in in tran transcendental mm -hmm. or a place where you can observe and, and receive a lot and be part of the experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like the larger surfaces, although sometimes challenging, can offer more space for me to uh, to play mm -hmm. uh, and to sometimes get into one area of the painting and then look at it from a distance and see uh, specifically like this painting here is has the landscape modality but also has gestural expression that mm -hmm. is being built into it and this is a work in progress um, that could stay the way it is but will probably continue. So you mentioned the idea of play. Mm -hmm. um, when you come into work and to create art in, a mor in the morning did you have, do you have a painting in mind or do you simply show up and then engage with those possibilities of what can happen? Yeah, I have tendencies um, and those tendencies can, ha can absolutely have to do everything with certain um, interpretation I have of the piece mm -hmm. and they can relate to a, an, an expression that I really want to hold on to or something that almost feels like I'm unsure of what to do and I need to let it sit for a while and and making those decisions is is part of the the, the joy of painting so that play um, sometimes it can be really hard but oftentimes I just have to go and push and not be afraid to mess it up that's one of the biggest things that I've uh, in, as learned as an artist is those mistakes that I make can lead to so many great things because I disappointed myself and somehow have found a way to resolve that disappointment. And I think for me, as, uh, as I grew up, uh, you know, facing performance anxieties or um, anything that has to do with how good I was doing mm -hmm. um, and the judgments that I felt, 
I've, I've always found ways to continue and, and sort of take those bold steps. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's really helped me as an artist. Yeah. And to me, that's, that's very interesting. What does it feel like to create like in such an abstract and physical way versus painting with a reference like a person or um, a bird or something like that? Right. So I have, I have what I like to do is put my work into series. So it gives me the freedom to sort of explore mm-hmm. um, a certain type of, of gestural abstraction versus um, horizon, uh, horizon. This is a horizon uh, um, style that I've leaned into creating atmospheric space. Mm-hmm. Um, and abstraction, there's a lot of different types of abs- abstraction. Um, so I like to put them into series and and if we're talking about figurative work, there's certain challenges that go with each type of art that I like to pursue. And those challenges then become ways of solving problems. And that's how we get triangles of, of meaning, first composition, then, you know, color and then value or value, then color mm-hmm. and, and detail, and then building these paintings. So um, I appreciate how all of these uh, styles can inform me as an artist to make work and explore and play. Um, So I feel that sculpture, drawing, painting, they can all harmonize for me as an artist. I wanted to ask you about sculpture. Um, I've, uh, I've discovered that you have several sculptures, public sculptures, out where people could go see them. Mm-hmm. I recently uh, visited Cave B, the lobby at the Cave B uh, hotel at the winery, and uh, saw your sculptures, uh, Metal and Light, in the lobby there. Um, I saw a couple of them, uh, yeah. there, and <laughs> I thought those were pretty exciting. You're very, um, very exciting. Well, um, and then I understand that you have uh, pieces, uh, is it Three Crescents? In three the, Crescents in mm-hmm, Seattle. On, in Seattle. At the Expo on uh, Republican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you told me this morning you have work uh, displayed. I have two pieces here. I also have uh, another piece in Seattle on Harrison, which is uh, just really close to, uh, it's all Lower Queen Anne where my okay. stuff is at, which is such an honor to be that close to the, the Seattle Center. There's some of the fantastic art yeah. that has been produced uh, through and, and around. Um, so I have two pieces over there, uh, Three Crescents on mm-hmm. Republican and Orthogonal Weave is on Harrison. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and thanks. those can be viewed at any time. Uh, certain work that I do at time of day is, is sort of can be an important really? uh, factor. I like to play with light. Um, for example, the piece that I have that Kittitas Valley Hospital um, at the Medical Arts, they commissioned me to do a sculpture titled Womb, and it has internally lit space. Oh. And it's an architectural piece, but it also... Um, is scaled and and there's a, a certain essential nature to how it uh, evokes the the unfolding of of birth and the nature of life. Um, it's a white sculpture, so it's white because I like the light to be able to be um, the most important element of conceptually what it's receiving and then also internally lit is something that we can shape mm-hmm. and color mm-hmm. uh, so that to me is is representation of how we come to life um, through the womb the sacred space yeah, yeah. i really like yeah. that um, what does it feel like as an artist it seems to me a work like a canvas like this um, i mean it might be hung in a bank or it might be in someone's home, um, it might be in a gallery, um, but a sculpture, a public sculpture, a monumental piece that's outside, um, I mean, what's the difference for you as an artist knowing that you're gonna engage um, so many people yeah. with, with public outdoor sculpture? I think it's such a, such a fantastic pursuit that I've chosen to put myself out there and 
pursue public art and I've always felt driven to understand concepts and 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 the overarching message of of projects of uh, regions and and this type of thing and to lean into creating sculpture that harmonizes with concepts of the past or mm. um, something that I connect with that is um, valuable to the storytelling of our time and, and where, uh, where I am in my perspective of, of what I think is valuable to, uh, to add to the narrative of the public area and the, and the institutions that bring these about. You, this all sounds very positive. Is mm -hmm. there any, in any part of that process of um, having very public um, art with a large audience, is there any element of anxiety or anything associated sure. with that? Well, it's a very competitive and, uh, oh. uh, path. Okay. Um, there's a lot of artists that have great ideas and they, the selection committees have to narrow it down and, and look at what has worked and, and um, if it fits their vision. So part of the partnership that is, is created has to do with my, um, my ability to see mm -hmm. what they're after and also how my art fits with them. A lot of uh, art is, or um, public commissions aren't necessarily worth me committing to because I don't feel like my art would fit their vision. But the ones that I do find, I get that anxiety. It's like, oh, this one will be really good. I just hope it works out. Um, you know, there's all of that that can happen as like childlike faith almost to go in and say, I hope they like my idea. Mm -hmm. And then having some experience that shows that this is a professional uh, artist working mm -hmm. to, and all of that stuff builds up. Am I qualified? Am I good enough? Some of those early childhood things that I still have to face as a professional um, come about, and that's that's okay. That's good. It kind of motivates me to um, to keep going and, and sharpen my sword, so to speak. So I have those anxieties, and beyond that is, um, you know, well, I guess it's it's a. Uh, <laughs> Let's 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 move to the next. Uh, okay, um, I did want to ask you about when we were talking earlier about um, some of your artwork. You were talking about the importance of the state of vulnerability, yeah, about I, continuing yeah, yeah. in vulnerability. Do you <laughs> mind good. talking about that? Yeah, that you thought that that was important. I do. So that feeling that um, uh, frisson of anxiety or childishness or yes. you know having questions and things like that about. Mm -hmm if your stuff would fit or be appreciated. Right. I mean, you think that that, you told me earlier you thought that was part of being vulnerable and yes. that that was important. Yes, it, it is very much so. In fact, I had, a, I, I stalled there and I had something and I, it slipped my mind and I was like, I wanted to get to that vulnerable, okay. that vulnerable spot. Because putting yourself out there as an artist and choosing to pursue to sometimes put things on a canvas that don't make sense yeah. or challenge you um, can really be rewarding. So that vulnerability to take those steps and put yourself out there, there's magic in that. And it's, <laughs> it can be very scary and it's like, oh man, don't jump off too far, uh, you know, and we have these reservations which are totally natural. Um, when I first started sculpture, uh, and, and feeling this wave of success was through relationship. It was, it was saying yes. It was doing things that I wasn't sure I could do. Mm -hmm. So there was this vulnerability of like, I have to do it. I can do this, you know. <laughs> I, I, I just have to try. Um, and I love that, that simple childlike nature to things that can have such weight to them. Um, and I feel like that vulnerability has really carried me in my in my making art yeah so uh, this i want to ask you about your length and breadth of your experience as an artist i mean were you as an artist as a child what was your training sure. um that kind of thing so growing up 
I always loved art, drawing, um, you know, coloring or whatever. I didn't practice uh, or study art until after high school. I was an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, other things were very important to me. Those different types of competitive performances uh, and, and uh, sports was very important. After I got out of, uh, of schooling and pursuing sports, I started to explore. And those explorations took me to uh, Europe where I got to really be immersed in the history of art mm -hmm. and just was shocked, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I moved to Santa Fe, New mm. Mexico, and I lived in Santa Fe and just took in the culture and the, and the richness that, uh, you know, like Georgia O'Keeffe, yes. her, her work just blows my mind. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the, the womb sculpture is very reminiscent of her work and her lines and her uh, love, the spatial connections that she creates. So I got to sit with her work and a lot of artists in Santa Fe and, and get into this reality mm -hmm. of art being a profession, mm -hmm. seeing how other artist studios had been set up and just being completely you know, charmed and in love with that whole, whole thing. Uh, that's Santa Fe. Santa Fe is a special place, mm -hmm. and the food um, was it was a really wonderful time. And then I came back to Central, here in Ellensburg, Central Washington University, and got a painting degree ah. uh, and and a music minor. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So I, at the time, I was very interested in how these this vocabulary in in art, visual art, related to the the vocabulary in our music art. And it's very similar, you know, you talk about rhythm, you talk about color, contrast, and, and these things that relate to both. And I was very fascinated with um, those ideas at the time. And then beyond that, I just started saying yes to projects and continued to paint and sold some work and mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. And it's been a really interesting journey for me because I've had to uh, find ways to make money. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as I learned how to make more money with art, that became more of a profession for me. I uh, continue to, to work to that. And it's, it's never an easy thing. It's like, oh, I made it. <laughs> it's, a, it's about getting the work done and spending the time with the, the work. I do want to um, explore that a little bit more because I know um, I, from friends of mine, that it's not easy to be a working artist. And I think people are interested in how you do that. I know you do commissioned art work, right. um, which I know some people find um, intimidating. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's, that's part of what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Commissioned artwork to me just means uh, there's a challenge and a relationship. Mm. If I can fortify those relationships with people that appreciate my work and want to collect my work I am all about that I love that and I've learned different ways to bring art into into things that um, are considered uh, you know creative processes like I got into casting uh, different mediums to have for uh, you know functional purposes like furniture and stuff like that mm -hmm. and I've played with those types of, of things just to explore who, who I was as an artist, as a craftsperson, mm -hmm. um, and then how I want to continue to evolve and what I want to pursue. So I've had those challenges, I got to stop doing this if I want to do this, uh -huh. and am I able to do this? And, and really finding commitment and follow through with those things I feel helps perpetuate a, uh, a really organic, interesting process. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like those elements are what makes up a career for you instead of uh, just being in a garret somewhere, right. painting something in isolation. Mm -hmm. I, I see you as engaged with people, with the community, and there being a give and take um, with your art instead of you just working in isolation. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> community, the, the word community, I love, uh, and I've been immersed in the community and withdrawn both uh, 
in different seasons of my life. And um, I really enjoy the connections with people, and especially if I can bring a creative outlook on things and, and to stir ideas. And, and then to even get to, to paint, I do some mentoring and mm-hmm. classes, be able to paint or explore composition or explore design, drawing, and these types of things. Um, is just, uh, I consider it uh, an opportunity to invest in someone else's creative capacity, which I feel like creativity in itself is something that we all share. Mm-hmm. And to be on that sort of page, it gives you the opportunity to see something, to be, to be surprised. And if we can have that outlook or that growth mindset to be inspired by a child or uh, what, how they see, or someone else that can just illuminate uh, with, their, with their perspective or their creative uh, uh, way of narrating or, or whatever it is, um, can be such an enriching perspective. I feel like I try to cultivate that in my art those types of ideals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So teaching for you is not a simple giving back um, from what you've learned, but it it sounds like it's also enhancing your continued growth as an artist. Yeah, it gives me contact points. It it helps me to remember some specific things that are important to me and and where I've been, what I do, uh, and where I want to go. So relationships are very important to Mm -hmm. me, yeah. Do you think where you are working as an artist is important? I mean, the when you mentioned Santa Fe, which that's where I bought this ring on oh, the cool. plaza yes, there. Jewelry. <laughs> um, I got to do some jewelry there. I, oh, was, you did? I worked with a jeweler who, oh, who made that. belt buckles. It was, oh, gosh. And my father is a jeweler. So. Oh, I didn't know that. That, that, okay. helped, that helped push me into some of these things, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, Santa Fe. About place. So, mm-hmm. Santa Fe, that world. And now working in Eastern Washington, um, I have lived in Washington for 10 years, but it came from the Midwest. I think of myself as um, being born and raised as a woman of the, of the Great Plains. Sure. And I was much struck as I drove over here today, once again, as I always am, by the magnificence of the geological landscape here. Do you think that has an impact on you as an artist about where you work? Sure. Well, I can think in terms of a bigger scale, like regionally, the Pacific Northwest is such a magical place mm-hmm. because it has such variety and things are so accessible to us to, to especially if you can identify with nature and, mm-hmm. and, and the rich uh, dynamics that uh, you, a lot of my work has, has um, been studies of, of, of striations or you can think of it as like, um, um, like uh, moss on a rock, mm-hmm. textures that we find, and all these varieties that we have here. Um, so there's so much inspiration in nature. And regionally, what a wonderful place to be an artist. Um, there's art all over the world, but this is a specific, rich uh, place to be in, I feel. Um, and then s- smaller scale, getting into this county, I feel like we have a great art community here. There's some really fantastic artists, and I was just in here the other day talking with uh, an artist friend about a project in Hawaii, um, and just the energy and the the discussion and the tensions that mm-hmm. can be created. I I hope to continue to cultivate that here in Ellensburg and in in surrounding areas to be a part of those conversations, and then my work in studio space. Um, I've had a lot of different studios. And I feel like this studio is really a culmination of, of things. And it, it's fairly small. I have these two spaces, but at the same time, there, it, it helps me to be concise about certain things and to invite people in here for this type of meeting and, and, and exploration. So I'm really excited about this space, yeah. I love this space. I'm. Um you are able to display so much work and have a place to work. I really like, I feel like the whole building in some ways is about your artwork. Oh, um, well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with the hallways full. I and... see I see this grand, magical picture. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to continue to try and paint that. Good, <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Oh, you're welcome. Gosh, yeah. it, it was 
really fun visiting here this morning. Yes. You mentioned that making and looking at art can be healing. Mm. Um, would you explain that from your perspective as an artist? Absolutely. Um, so spending time with a painting or spending time observing art in general is, is about time. It's about investing your mind, you, your attention. And whenever we can take our attention and, and hone in on something and really discover or look at it maybe for the first time or approach it in that way, we can, we can find and discover things that elevate our appreciation for our world around us. So the idea of healing has to do with taking the time and the attention to really investigate intentionally. I think when you start getting into that frame of reference, you uh, are engaging with healing. Mm -hmm. Our body's natural capacity to find balance, homeostasis. Um, I love that about painting. We, in our day, we're flipping through phones, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a five second attention span <laughs> onto the next thing. And we're very caffeinated in that way. <laughs> Not to say that all those things aren't valuable or should be like refrained from. Um, it's just taking those intentional moments similar to our yoga practice or a breathing meditation. Can we approach painting and art with that same healing mindset that what can I receive from this? What can I learn? What can I understand? Sometimes we see something that attracts our attention that we don't like. Spend some time with that. Why don't we like it? What is it about that? Allow this uh, and trust yourself to, to, to observe. And you might touch on emotion that, that um, can be resolved through time and attention. Wow. Yeah. So um, the simple notion that you look at a painting or sculpture because it's beautiful mm -hmm. and you're drawn, the eye is drawn to it by beauty. Yes. Um, do I hear you saying that that's too much too simple of a way to approach art? Yes, I would say that beauty is like our our natural tendency to be drawn to beauty. When beauty is present, we're going to, especially if that's our what we have frames of reference, like a sunset. It's mm -hmm. hard to say that I'm not drawn to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think when we go to an artwork and we have that same mindset we continue to build and enhance our ability to appreciate and enrich our life because we're practicing this and it just makes it so much more fun to to uh to communicate and and to witness our world and have relationship when we have that uh that perspective so. this um interview is turning out to be very life affirming i think <laughs> Um, do you have a philosophy of art? Like the role of art in our society, wow, in our world? Yes. Oh. Historically speaking, there's, this is such a loaded question. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you what it means to me. I'd like to hear that. Um, my role, my purpose for building and, and making art is to to first be an explorer, to be uh, someone who's brave to, to jump into that inward journey mm -hmm. and, and then express it outwardly. I think that's a worthy cause. It's, worth, it's a worthy cause to find the edge of a pencil on a piece of paper. And it sounds very simple, but that's for me a worthy pursuit. And then beyond that, if I have something to share and to build and to reciprocate, this intention uh, to better the world. I would love to do that and participate in that building and that constructivism. Um, I know that art can be sometimes deconstructing. Um, and I go through those struggles within my own art um, without having the intention to deconstruct necessarily. Um, 
my work isn't about propaganda or these types of things, but I see the value in, in those types of art to challenge our minds, to challenge how we view things and, and, and where, where we identify and, and do we question ourselves enough? Sometimes these are, are things that make us feel more vulnerable. And is it okay to question? Am I okay to question myself? And these are hard things, but I think that the more you get used to it, you find security in um, just being and needing to absolutely be someone who produces something isn't the end all. Just being and being with yourself and being able to breathe and appreciate and have um, a sense of, of worth regardless of what you create and do is very very important yeah so if i can bring about those types of ideals then i would love to to help <laughs> yeah yeah you said some fascinating things this morning i mean i really feel like we've been able to explore your history as an artist your motivation as an artist your engagement with community I really thank you for being so honest this yeah. morning and um, really speaking to me and to our audience about art, its value, your motivations, um, where you, what role you perceive for yourself in the community. I yeah. thank you a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I do want us to get into talking about some of your specific paintings, but is there anything else you'd like for us to talk about while we're seated here visiting? Jane, thank you so much for- You're welcome great questions and drawing out these uh, these inquisitive things that we're talking about. I, I really do enjoy this. Um, I can mention that austinjsmith.com mm -hmm. is a place that you can connect with me, www.austinjsmith.com. Uh, would be a good place to connect with me there. And um, I would love to have people come to the studio and and, and experience and, and ask questions and uh, hopefully we can create some good synergy with the surrounding area. That sounds great. Yes, to my friends in North Central Washington, I would encourage you to visit uh, downtown Ellensburg and visit the studio of Austin J. Smith. There's plenty of his work um, available to look at here. It's a beautiful historic building that's been restored. I really have enjoyed my visit here this morning. Fantastic, thank you. You're welcome. Yes. All right.